Friends, my next guest is not only the Toronto Maple Leafs general manager, but he also apparently now is a TV and streaming star. Kyle Dubas joins us on the line. Thanks for doing this, Kyle. Thank you for having me, Tim. All right, full disclosure, I haven't had a chance to take in the Amazon Prime Leafs All Access, uh, all or nothing. I'm assuming you got a sneak preview on this thing? Uh, but the way it all was, was happening throughout, you, you know, we had... We saw a various number of iterations of it. Um, I actually haven't watched the, the okay. complete final version, uh, but I think I I know enough of the way that it was being built out to to get the uh, get the gist of it. And of course, having lived it, um, <laughs> you know you know you know exactly yeah. what happened every step of the way. Save for some of the the player the away from the rink player stuff that uh, that you'd never really see. But uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I think I, I think I can probably lend some insights to it for sure. Uh, I'm sure you would have liked the ending to go a little bit different, but in, <laughs> yes, in, in, uh, yes, in this new age of like pro sports media, was it tough to have the cameras around? Did you forget about them? Like, what was the experience like? Um, at the beginning of the show, it was certainly an adjustment. So there was the you know, the the individual camera operators, of which there was really just the one crew. Um, right. And 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 those guys were great. Um, they they kind of they had a lot of experience doing shows like this, so there was no issue with, with the with the sound and camera people. They they were they knew kind of when to um, you know when to bide their time, when to depart, when to be around all this all these different things that are are vitally important. I think concerns you have when. Um, it was announced that we were going to be doing the show was right. just how much would it infiltrate everything that we were doing and how much would it become, you know, a real pain for, for us. And then the, all the other footage that you see, whether it's, you know, the dressing room, Sheldon's office, my office, um, were, were these, I don't know the exact technical term for them, but they were, they were permanent cameras placed in and there were microphones all throughout. So the beginning, it wow. was a big adjustment, but then <laughs> by the end of the show or by the, you know, you get into month three, four, five, it had just become part of the normal furniture and 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 part of you know kind of everything. So you you grew accustomed to it over time, and obviously not having any experience you know in that industry or in that realm, it was certainly a little bit different. But I, I don't think it had any um, you know, negative impact on our operation at all. I guess that's how you should live in 2021, anyway. Like, it's almost like we have permanent cameras and microphones everywhere we go, anyway. So it's kind of like a, it's a preamble the way life is. Yeah, I don't, yes, I, I suppose so. I think you want to have some some sense of privacy in, in some parts of your life, but yeah. I don't think you're too far off, to, for sure. Uh, I've heard NFL teams, after having hard knocks around, say bleep that never again, and I've seen people embrace it. Like, where are you on the spectrum? Um, I think probably the way your season goes has a lot to do with how you yeah. feel about it. I mean, yeah. I know that um some of the teams that have done some of the shows in the past that had success think that it you know having the cameras around it, it led to a different level of accountability and then most of the teams that didn't have the success that they aspired to would say not a chance you know we're never doing that again um you know i it'll be interesting to see how how everyone responds and reacts to the show but i i just think you know for us you know, just getting back in, in this market and, and with our team in particular, I think there's enough coverage and, and enough, uh, enough, you know, out there about the team. Yeah. And we also do our own um, show internally, the blueprint that you know, obviously captures a little bit of what goes on. And, and I think to, to kind of give fans of the peak of really truly who we are. Um, but in terms of a season long show like that, again, I think it'd be, uh, I think it'd be tough to do them continually. Yeah, something tells me the Leafs get a little bit of press. Is a little bit of attention, yeah. <laughs> I get it. So I'm sure then if we're talking about all the press that you guys get, you heard the reports on Sheldon Keefe's extension. Anything that you want to break with us here? Any confirmation, denial? No, oh, no, I mean, it was uh, Sheldon's contract extension. We, we took care of that uh, early on in the summer. So um, it's been sort of just done quietly and done for for a while now it didn't really seem like a a big you know matter that that uh of huge public interest until you know, yesterday with with the reports out about it but no he's uh you know he's he's now uh, signed and locked in through 23 24 and um you know i think it's it's a, it's a great thing for our organization and obviously very happy for for sheldon having worked with them for for a long time now that uh, that he'll get that level of security and, and we'll get back to work here as we have since last last week and start building towards the season and the excited to, to work together again.
Are, are you excited that he gets a real season? Or at least as <laughs> yes. close to a real yeah. season that we can see in 2021? Uh, I think, you know, normalcy is not something that he's he's had the luxury of uh, in his role here, uh, yeah. Tim, you know, coming in, um, you know, in late November in 2019 and, and taking over a team that really you know, like was was in a very good place, certainly stabilized it and, and then uh, were able to roll on um, disappointing end of that season. But, you know, very strange circumstances with the pandemic suspending uh, play for over four months. And then last year, um, obviously, I think we had a good regular season, not to the level that I think we're fully content at all. Um, but I think he's shown w what he can do and the different things he can build. And even if it hasn't led to the ultimate success that that we and, and everybody who follows our team passionately wants to see, which is to, to have success in the playoffs. So um, all that said, when it comes to Sheldon, um, the one thing that, that I know about him from working with him for a long time now is when there are seasons that that end in, in big disappointment, I think you always see the best from him the subsequent year. And, and I'm, I'm confident that, uh, that we'll see that here this season uh, with him and with our team. Uh, some have projected this as a do or die season for the franchise and I know you and I have talked about how fine the line oftentimes is Ovi can't win he's a Stanley Cup champ Tampa can't get it done when it matters most to the best hockey team in the NHL. Do you think the projections of do or die for this iteration of this franchise are fair. Um, I, I think people especially in this market with how. Uh, how passionately people follow the team, if it, whether it's their job or whether they're a fan, are entitled to uh, have whatever opinion of, of the group that they want. Um, and I think that from our standpoint internally, Tim, we have a huge amount of belief in, in the team. Um, and you know, not only uh, in the players, but in the coaching staff and, and in, in the way that uh, we've operated. And I think, as I said on, on the opening day, it's easy to, to feel that way at the very beginning. If you go back to 2000, you know, 15, 16, when we drafted um, Mitch and Austin and you have William in the fold already, I think you have a very optimistic view of the way that things are going to unfold. Um, but I think, you know, True belief is really tested when you have moments like we had last May, where you have a good season, you build up hope for everybody, and, and then um, it leads to disappointment. And being able to stand in at those moments and and you know, all of the doubt and criticism that, that deservedly comes your way, uh, and then be able to, to get back up again and get at it and push towards your breakthrough. So uh, however people want to term it, I think we're just focused on uh, having the best training camp here we can, um, including with you know tonight with an inter-squad game that should be very competitive and um, getting ready to go for the regular season and, and knowing that the level of discipline we had last year and ensuring that that doesn't happen again. Um, and that's really all that you know, for myself, Sheldon, our players, really all that we can focus on. Focus on doing the right thing. I understand that. And that blue and white squad game, which is available on Sportsnet One, uh, is very interesting because I know there are a couple of interesting position battles for some open spots. I know that your fans have had some ideas on who looked good in camp. Has anyone jumped out to you in camp to uh, have those position battles? Well, I, I think um, the key things that you're looking for is, you know, you, you, you know you've got your players that have been, been members of the group and are going to be members of the group. And I think you're, you're just looking to make sure that they're healthy and that they're building themselves up towards October 13th. And then, you know, with the new players coming in, I think you're, you're looking to uh, validate why you brought them in, look for the things positively that they do well. And then any improvements that they've made, either working with the development, um, their own development people in the summer or with our strength and, and conditioning group in the summer. And, and then, watch them try to take hold of the positions whether it's on the wing where we've brought in you know, a few uh, different players and given them the chance to compete or on defense where we've got our own young players that are that are battling for position and i think you know we've got five defense returning that were part of the group for the entire season last year right and you know we've got our own younger players in rasmus sandine and timothy Lill young players like a uh, uh, Philip Crawl, who you know we drafted in the fifth round in 2018, has had a very good camp as well. So you start to see those things that that are obviously exciting for an organization. And then, like you're obviously, I don't I don't put too much stock in in preseason performance and such, but it sure is a better feeling when when the players that are that have been brought in, you know, whether it's they were drafted or or free agents or or through trade, get off to a good start. And I think you know for the likes of Michael Bunting and Josh Hosang and Andre Kasha and David Camp, you know they've come into to 
priests, they were really good in, in the training camp portion, and that's translated over to um, to the preseason games so far, where, where they've been. You know, it's good for them, I think, to be able to produce and feel good about themselves. And um, I think it just gives you a little bit more comfort going into the season that you got. You've had these guys come in and and perform well so far in in camp, and now we'll, we'll continue to try to keep it rolling through the second week and and then the final few days and be ready for Montreal on the thirteenth. Uh, hey, last one for you. It, it's it, like, does the flat cap make it really important that those last few guys that you mentioned here, that a few of them, one of them or two of them can really make an impact in the team? It's vital, I think, for us and, and how we'll be judged in terms of a management team and player personnel department, scouting, Tim, you know, We've obviously made our commitments to to the, the guys that form the core of the group on forward and and on defense um, that, that have been signed with with some term and with the cap, you know, a few weeks before, you know, the, the, the pandemic shut things down in mid-March, it was projected it was going to continue to go up and, and go up significantly with the new TV deal. And now the circumstances have, have changed and, and there's nothing that we can do about that other than react and um, and do as, as good a job as we can at finding players that, that can come in and, and make an impact that just need an opportunity or they're recovering from an injury or they've, they've had some down luck and, and they're available for us. So it, it's, you know, the question you asked, is it important? I think it's more than important. It's vital that we're able to um you know this when when we're trying to be you're trying to be a contending team and in the flat cap you're going to have guys that are going to be free agents and we experienced that last year losing a key forward from our group um and so you now you have to go find out and tr- uh, find a way to replace that player right and you have to you, know, you don't you don't have the money to bring in one person so you've got to you've got to split it a little bit and and try to be efficient that way and so it's it's more than just important i think it's vital to to our team having success that we're able to to do as, as good a job we can providing sheldon uh and the and the dressing room as many good options as we can and and um you know it's been good camp so far but i don't try to get too far ahead of ourselves with that they need to continue to push through the final week and be ready for the regular season and, and beyond Understood. And perhaps almost as impressive as the conversation that we just had is the angelic-like look, the (laughs) Oprah-like look of Kyle Dubas. I really appreciate you taking the time.